In today's video, I'll be showing you 10 things you could use a thermal camera for. There's a few just for fun uses as well, so stay tuned till the end for those. The camera I used for this is the Tapdon TC004. And in order for you to see the actual image I was looking at, I also filmed each shot on my phone and put the videos side by side. Without further ado, let's begin with number one. A thermal camera can be used to find hot spots in electrical circuits or components, which would indicate that a part is overheating, there is a loose connection, or something is shorting out. Electricians will sometimes use a thermal camera to find faulty circuit breakers. A breaker that is going bad will often be hotter than those around it. Number two, leaking door seals. You could easily find hot or cold spots on door seals using a thermal camera. Front doors, side doors, garage doors, slide doors, spots in or around the door that stand out in the thermal image would indicate that that section is not adequately sealed. Here's a fun fact for you. Firefighters use these cameras to see if the room they're about to go into is hot by looking at the door. Door gaskets, such as on a refrigerator, could also be checked in a similar manner. If the gasket is making a good seal, the color of it should all be the same on the camera. But if there is a leak somewhere, it would be pretty easy to spot it as that spot would stand out. Number 3. A leak in the water heater tank. Oftentimes a leak in the tank would show up on a thermal camera as a hot spot. Even though you'd probably still need to replace the water heater, at least you can confirm where the leak was. Number 4. Water leaks in the walls. A water pipe in the wall or floor that spraying a leak would also show up as a hot or cold spot, making it easier to pinpoint the source of the leak. This is especially useful with in-floor heating. Knowing exactly where to take the floor apart eliminates the need to tear it all apart while looking for the leak. Number 5. Checking the insulation in your walls and ceilings. What you are looking at here is an example of bad insulation. This is the ceiling in our living room early in the morning after it had all night to cool off. And here's what it looks like in the afternoon. It gets super hot. But I'm sure that your ceilings and walls are probably much better insulated, so you would only use this camera to spot areas that are lacking insulation. You can also look for air leakages on the exterior of the house, which is what many energy auditing companies do. We see here that, as usual, the attic is the hottest spot. But make sure you do this when it's not very sunny outside, otherwise the heat from the sun will mess with the thermal imaging. Another thing to keep in mind is that a thermal camera will detect reflected temperature off of glossy surfaces or reflections, like how you can see me in the window here. And talking about windows, number 6 is checking window insulation. Much like the door seals, you can also check how well your window seals off the air. Areas that show up colder or hotter on the camera mean that there is a bad seal in that spot. Adding some weather stripping may be all that is needed to get that fixed. Number 7 is checking condensers. Sorry, I didn't get a chance to film this video on my phone, but here's what the condenser unit looks like inside of a refrigerated display case. With a thermal camera, you'd be able to quickly tell if the compressor is overheating, and it's kind of neat to see the discharge side of the compressor and how it totally lights up on this camera. We can see here that the refrigerant is the hottest at the top of the condenser coil, and as air blows over it, it cools off as it goes down the coil. And here's what a window air conditioner looks like. Notice how it's the hottest on the top as well. The blue section on the bottom is where the water drain pan is, and the blue that we see on top of the unit is where the condenser fan sprays some of that water out through the grate above. Here is the view from inside the house, and of course the section that is dark is where the cold air blows out. And one more, an example of what a split unit condenser would look like while it's running. It looks like the motor is another component that gets rather hot while the unit is running. And if a motor is burnt out, it would probably light up twice as bright on the camera. On a refrigerator, the condenser fan and compressor is usually located on the bottom, and here we can clearly see that the fan is pushing the hot air out on the bottom right side. Just as an experiment, let's go ahead and open the freezer for about 30 seconds. Since colder air sinks to the bottom, we should see a patch of blue on the floor when we close the door. And here it is. We also see that I didn't leave the door open long enough for that hot spot to actually cool off. Here's another example of cold air sinking. The camera shows that the temperature is colder on the bottom of the steps leading down into the basement. Number 8. Leaking ductwork can easily be identified with a thermal camera. 
if it is not behind a finished ceiling that is. In this video, the air conditioner is on and you can see that the ductwork is colder than everything around it. As we examine the ductwork, if there would be any blue spots spilling out around the duct, that would mean that that section is poorly sealed and air is easily seeping through. With this particular run, I did not find any leaks that were worth addressing, but if you were to find some, firmly applying some foil tape over the leaking section is usually all that is needed to seal that up. Moving on to number 9, examining vents to see in which direction the air is being thrown. In this video we see that there's a little table above the vent, and with the thermal camera we are able to see how the cold air is deflected and where it goes. This next vent here is designed to direct the air in three different directions. And as we can see on the thermal camera, it is doing just that. Good job vent. And finally, number 10, night vision. Various things like concrete and trees retain the heat they absorb during the day from the sun. Even after it gets dark outside, it takes a long time for them to cool off. In this clip, I filmed an example of a sidewalk and a palm tree during the daytime. I then waited till it got nice and dark outside and filmed that same spot again. Here I have the flash on my phone on so you can actually see what I'm looking at, but I also filmed it with the flash off and got the same exact results. You can see pretty darn good in the dark with the thermal camera. It's pretty incredible. Number 11, bonus random footage. That's my son looking at a book. And here I turned on the hot water, waited for it to heat up and then switched it to cold. I found it fascinating to watch the water and the faucet change colors as they cooled off. The law of physics states that heat travels from hot to cold, which means that this cold table is currently absorbing the heat from my hand. And when I take it off, we see on the camera that that is exactly what happened. You can even take a stab at being a detective. So your kids said they didn't go outside, huh? Little did they know, shoes stay warm for half an hour after you take them off. All of these shoes were recently worn, except those in the back. Not long ago, it seems like somebody comfortably kicked back and relaxed on this couch. I wonder if they were supposed to be doing chores instead. It looks like my wife did not go to the store on the truck today. I can tell from a single glance that she went on the car. Vehicles take a very long time to cool off after being used. Recently, I went up a big mountain with some friends, and when we were driving back down, security stopped every single car to check the temperature of the rotors with the thermal camera like this. If the brakes are too hot, then people need to wait for 20 minutes before continuing down. And I thought this was pretty cool too. I walked forward on this carpet, and when I turned around, you could actually see the footprints that I left behind. And that is all I had. Thank you so much for watching, and if you made it all the way till the end, I have a joke for you. Or maybe even two. Hmm. I used to think I was indecisive, but now I'm not so sure. Did you know Adam and Eve were the first ones to ignore the Apple terms and conditions? <laughs>